and all this. So we're trying to speak out against that and just make sure that we hold them accountable to what they've talked about during election time. Amen. Any any of the rest of you want to comment on that? Um, for us in reclaiming our homes, uh, Benito Flores, one of the reclaimers, also created a people's contract that um, had some of the elected officials that were running. That actually, yeah, some of the people that were running as for elected uh, officials, such as Unisys Hernandez, which is then CD one that replaced Gil Cedillo, and so that holds uh, them accountable after they get elected. And so um, once they sign this contract, then they we could hold them accountable and we elect these officials so we could also have them resign and take them out when, um, when uh, they're not doing the work that they said they were gonna do. And so that's kind of like what we're really um, focusing on, on, on terms of accountability, because we realize that once you know, a lot of people vote for people that look like us, they're black and brown, all right, they, they must be cool, I'll vote for them, but they still hold, uphold the systems of oppression, so it's the same thing. If they uphold the, the systems of oppression, they could look like us, but they don't do things on our interests, then they don't matter. Like, representation really doesn't matter uh, on how we look. Representation means that they're like abolishing the systems and really upholding the people and not um, the systems of oppression. And so uh, that's kind of like what we're pushing in, in electoral politics is more accountability from the ground up and from people at the grassroots level, um, the most vulnerable people holding these electors officials accountable. And also being, being represented in, in this election by people not only that look like us, but also uh, have our interests in account. Amen. Um, uh, another question that was came up in the chat is about the Martin v. Boise decision, because that's a big issue around the West, where where that is uh, has to do with the rights of unhoused people not to be ticketed and criminalized uh, when when the uh, when the system doesn't provide uh, any any place for them to go. Uh, do you have any comments on how that's been uh, applied? in uh, Los Angeles, or uh, apparently there was uh, recently in, in Sacramento, they have a, and we seem to have a lot of, based on the comments, I think we've got a lot of people from Sacramento here, and uh, they passed a thing called Measure O, and Measure O is something that's apparently very similar to this uh, uh, Ordinance 4118 that they have in Los Angeles. So can you explain a little bit about how that works and uh, how <clears throat> it would seem that those ordinances are in violation of the Martin v. Boise decision. Uh, can you explain how, how that struggle is playing out? Yeah, sure. I could probably uh, start that one off as well. Uh, so the problem we have in here in LA is that, uh, so, since I've been since I've been doing this, you know, the the city been 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 found guilty of all these different lawsuits, uh, several lawsuits. The city right off the top when we file a lawsuit like Tony Levan versus City of Los Angeles around property rights, right? Um, and so the city got an injunction, right? Where they they it was illegal for them to confiscate people's property, right? And if somebody just tripped out and just left a shopping cart like right in front of a door, they just had to take it. They had to they had to take the picture of the, the, the shopping cart in viol the violation position. They had to they had to um, interview all the property. They had to tag it. They had to bag it. And they had to store it for ninety days. And they had to leave a notice telling the person where they can go find their property at. Right. So anytime the city get hit with a lawsuit. Right, and they get an injunction and a direct order from the federal courts, stop this and do this, right? The city never adhere to that. They always find a way to backdoor something new or to get around it. And that's what's been the problem with the city of Los Angeles. They're not a mind into what the other states are saying because they listen to the business improvement district, right? And, and they just figure out a way to just wiggle their way around it, right? 
And so that's been the problem, right? Is to, you know, is to stop them. I mean, they they like X likes. They got so many different moves, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they hit, they there, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and so it's hard, right, to really control that and really fight that because they forever changing. They're, they're men 4118D just to get around what the federal courts say, right? And, and so that that's what's been the problem is the Los Angeles not adhering to what the order is, no matter where it is, and then creating different amendments and stuff like that around old policies and shit, bringing them up, and then trying a whole new different enforcement. Sandy, we can't hear you. You're Sorry, I have a little cold, so I've been muting myself, so I don't cough all over, all over everybody, but uh, uh, thank you for reminding me. I'm going to go in a little bit different direction here, which is to uh, go back to Melinda and ask um, particularly around uh, uh, after the midterm elections, what are the next steps in the national reproductive freedom movement, uh, both in states where the bans have been imposed and also in the states where bans were defeated. If you could talk a little bit about that. And, and again, I'm trying to figure out how do we tie these movements together? Because they're both about human rights. Well, reproductive rights are also tied into your housing rights. Um, like, uh, I know I've had the experience of not leaving a relationship because I didn't have anywhere to go. And if I would have had a place to go for me and all my children, I would have <laughs> been able to get out about mm, six years earlier than when I did. Um, and when people talk about on mainstream media, is it the economy or is it reproductive rights? Shut up. Those two things are directly related. They say it costs over $300,000 to raise a kid. I cannot do another one. My baby is nine. I have four. <laughs> like, I might make it. You know what I mean? Is how I feel. My oldest is 24 and, I, and I'm tired. Um, the, the reproductive justice issue is can, cannot go away. Um, we are going to continue to see increases in maternal deaths and maternal morbidities. Um, and I mean, a lot of that stuff, too, is, is directly related to our environment, right? Like, you know, Lay's potato chips, they got the big old Lay's potato chip factory in Topeka, Kansas, a little bit west of me. And almost everybody that's there and pregnant has their baby prematurely. Everybody there has their baby early. And and that's an environment thing, you know, or like even where me and my kids live, we would live between a five lane federal highway, literally a house away and the coal power plant. That coal power plant, we breathe that in all day, every day. So, you know, when I'm cold, I turn my electric heater on because I'm cold, they burn more coal and I breathe that in, right? And so all of our health care and abortion is health care and we all have the right to health care. They are absolutely the same rights that we have when it comes to housing. Um, I wanted to say, General, thank you so much for talking about like really specifically the kinds of services that um, you know, you have programs to try to directly provide like like legal support and community safety. Like those are the two biggest things right now missing in our houselessness community. We are trying to establish, we have been since April, um, we are trying to establish a legal representation for everyone facing eviction. Um, we have you know, we're building it piece by piece right now, dragging one attorney at a time into each case kind of thing. Um, you know, but we know from leaders in other areas across the country that once you have uh, lawyers for people facing eviction, those eviction numbers drop off a little bit, right? Once those landlords know that somebody might actually show up to court, they better come correct with their paperwork or they, they may not win. Um, so, you know, the numbers drop off immediately. Um, and so we're, we're hoping to keep building that. Um, but, but also you talking about the you know, exact services, that's really helpful. Thank you. Oh, and then, oh, I see the, the question about electoral climate. I mean, you could see the November results for Kansas. I mean, I got a white supremacist as my attorney general. Another one is the secretary of state that won't honor freedom of information requests. Um, 
you know, uh, somebody that's pretty unknown is now going to be our state treasurer. <laughs> um, we have uh, white supremacists that just follow the extremist lines that we're sending to, to Congress. We're sorry. Um, but, uh, you know, I, the Democratic Party has a lot of work to do. Um, I keep telling younger people, too, like there's just not much left of the Democratic Party in Kansas, which means you could go just take it and make it yours. You can just reclaim it. They don't seem to care that I'm a socialist. They don't seem to care that I that I do this community work, too. Um, you know, they, they like to say that they want to care about these things, um, but they they need a lot of a lot of direction. Um, in general, um, I could just keep trying to build coalitions, you know, from that grassroots level um, to, to keep affecting the electoral climate. We got uh, gerrymandered really hard, and uh, we're also going to go from our, our county government. I know L.A. only has, what, three county commissioners, or do you all have five? It's it's a tiny board for your county, isn't it, like for your size? Like there's... I don't know. You know how many yeah. Five. It's five. It's five, yeah. five, it's five, it's five right? Five. Yeah, but Boys. but like a but yeah, it's five, but like a ton of people live there, right? Our yeah, county has yeah, 125,000 yeah. people in our whole county. Yeah. They're going to go from three to five, and I'm very worried about how they're going to cut up the districts. You know, we yeah. got two socialists elected in 2020. Now they want to expand the number of districts. Uh, our, our city commission went from 0% black to 40% black, and now they want to change the way we elect our mayor and our, and our city commissioners, too. Um, you know, so so watching like how people draw maps and um, looking at that bigger picture and that electoral climate, um, it really just takes coalitions and teams of people that each have these different kind of skills and interests. You know, I mean, there's some stuff I don't understand. I, I'll never, you know, that'll never be my part of of the revolution, um, and that's why it's a joy to work together. That's right. Thank you, Melinda. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, there was a lot of discussion during the election about um, the right to vote and the right to have the votes counted and the right to vote without uh, someone in a militia taking a picture of you when you go put your ballot in a, in a, in a drop box. And uh, the question of the rights to vote, whether they're even going to be counted. So my question for all of you is how do you see your work contributes to the national there's a national movement out there to preserve the right to vote and to expand democracy um uh to confront through it we had questions in the chat about confronting uh this corporate uh the corporate agenda which is uh in all of our states so uh, do, you have, do you have comments about that yeah, I'll start first. I have two short thoughts. Um, I'm really excited because all over my state of Kansas, people that are 29 year old white guys that they'll call themselves centrists, centrist Democrats, but they are quick to say that billionaires should not exist and housing is a right and abortion is health care. So I don't know what the 29 year old leftists are thinking, but um, that's fine. I can work with that, right? Uh, so I think people are ready especially like the under 40 crowd like people are ready for something different and and new um the uh, other thought i had was i really loved uh reverend william barber's sermon on october 30th he talked about how inch by inch vote by vote we can all go to the water and we can all fall in and we can all be healed and i i just his words still resonate in my mind. Um, again, that's October 30th, uh, Reverend William Barber. Um, Cause I, I think that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be one registered voter at a time. Um, and, and votes always go into also link tightly into housing, right? Because if you can't have, if you can't prove your address, if you can't prove your ID, at least we have ID voting laws here in Kansas. Um, and then uh, a lot of folks in our native populations um, in, in some parts of the country, like they're not assigned regular addresses and things like that. And so working with um, different systems like 911 communications and things like that, we've been able to try to establish addresses to be able to get more people uh, registered, registered to vote. 
but it's it's one vote at a time. Martha, Martha, do you have anything to respond to that? Um, to me, it also has to do a lot with the accountability. And um, as Melinda stated, also with the, the people are confused on, on who the Democrats are and where they stand. Like um, they have leaned so much towards big corporations that people are really disillusioned and don't know for what party to vote for. And so that's why it's important to also look into voting outside these party systems, that there's other options as well, that um, we also should build uh, uh, more commissioners or more uh, representatives because we have so many, so much population and, and different communities and they're not being represented. So it's a whole transformation that we need to do in this voting system. And um, the fact that we do need to hold those in power accountable at all levels. One thing that I am excited about, in, at least in a local Los Angeles level, is the election of Kenneth Mejia, our city controller, now because I, uh, he ran on a platform of uh, transparency and to educate people on on what's going on with the money, because uh, we. <laughs> We have a lot of money here in Los Angeles. There's an abundance of resources and money that flows through and we don't know where it ends up. So that's something that we have to figure out. And I'm excited to learn more about that and um, that we have choices on, on where to spend our money as well. That it doesn't have to be um, in programs that are not functioning for us. And uh, so if uh, we have someone elected now that could hold those in power, um, accountable is it is exciting and to keep that going on all levels on all political levels and on the on the ground up level amen um yeah sure i mean uh so glad you asked this question so this last night we had political education we always you know believe from the bottom to the top starting at the, you know, the lowest bottom with folks, you know, homeless folks and working them all the way on up with education and stuff. So we always go have political education classes here at LA Can, And we all also debrief the election. And that was some of the things we did last night. So we, I don't know if you can really see the board right here, but, whoa. but this was like the board that we did. We laid out like what was on the ballot for us with the city, state, federal, county and stuff like that so people had conversations right around each one of these areas you know and about the mayor right do we think they're gonna she gonna do what she says she gonna do right and then and then we had more stuff about talked about the budget mayor you know understand me about the veto power what's some of the power that the mayor got you know then we talked about city council and stuff like that what are city council members that was for us what some city council members that are against us and stuff like that how do we change the city council power how do we gain the veto vote from the mayor and stuff like that? so we always talking about these right and so i think you know that's where we at right now for us on skid row right here um is just basically education and just trying to get people involved in the you know the voting process Right, and I think, and say this too, I think the old norm, Republican and Democrat party is kind of like playing out. You know, I know it was a lot of mention of new parties and new names and we need a new this and a new that. You know, that means it was mentioned also because people are not really having faith like they did in the system, you know, like they used to do. So, Thank you, uh, General Dogan. Yeah, I think, uh, I know there's a lot of discussion about uh, new parties that, uh, but how to get there is the hard part. That's what we're working out. And I remember uh, Kenneth Mejia and, and Angelica uh, Duenas actually were on our program in October. And they mentioned, for example, that they came out of the Green Party and that um, yeah, the Green Party. and, and uh, that actually they left the Green Party because yeah. they just couldn't get enough traction. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so they kind of, it, and they went into the Democratic Party, but uh, my impression was that they went in as infiltrators. They went into infiltrate <laughs> the Democratic Party. And actually uh, it paid off, uh, certainly for Kevin, 
uh, Kenneth, who, yeah. who won just a huge victory, a huge right. victory. And he's going to have oh. tremendous power and influence going forward. And that's a victory for all tenants. He was a tenant organizer, a victory for unhoused people, because we need all the platforms we can get. I've been involved in this work for 30 years, and almost all of it, we were just outsiders. Nobody listened to us. Nobody heard us. Uh, and we, we'd get go to city council in small groups of 25, 50 people, and they'd laugh at us, or they would okay. ignore us, or they'd say, you can only speak for one minute, then you have to shut up. Yeah, that we'll so <laughs> so uh, we're used to being treated that way, but times are changing. Times yeah. are changing. Now, actually, our people are sitting up there on city council and oh, they, wow. can't just, okay, right. they, can't, they can't push us away the way they, right. they're used to doing. They can't just brush us off. We well, have voices. Fight. So it's a, it's a big change. When you have Carol Fife on the city council in Oakland, uh, the city council is not going to just laugh at you and tell you to go away. Not what uh, there. And actually her ally won as mayor. They had a, the, they called it a, I forget, the pro progressive slate for mayor. And yes. they, they had this ranked choice voting system there. Wow. And uh, so everybody voted for either Sheng Tao or Alyssa Victory or uh, Greg Hodge. And when one of them didn't uh, make the cut for the election, then all of their votes went to the other. And that's how Sheng Tao came out on top as the victory. And she's not gonna allow allow the city council to laugh at people anymore and to ignore people. And uh, I think you've seen it there in LA. I, I heard, uh, yeah. yes. I read the articles about Nuri Martinez used to, used to be the, the, the president of the board. And when people went to protest about this 4118, she accused them of being insurrectionists like the Donald Trump people who went to the Capitol. Yeah. I mean, uh, really crazy treatment. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, there any other comments that you want to put in? I think we're moving toward wrapping this up. But any final comments? Yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to coming back and, and, and maybe we could lay out some more of the fight all right, and some next steps. Most definitely, I'm um, talking to a lot of folks in the next generation, right? Uh, young folks, uh, we organizing street watch teams around the city, personally doing the training. And, uh, and basically we trying to get um, uh, sales in every district. We need to organize every district, right? For a citywide fight back, right? right? Yeah, and so that's what we working on right Excuse now. Excuse me, can you uh, hear me? Can you step. see my text? I'm one and up, I'm one we're supposed to know a lot of homeless in Northern the California and, and, and the internet is okay, in California. A lot of homeless don't want to be housed because, um, or in hotels, because then their, their, their rights to privacy are trampled and because they search and I talked to them in the coalition homes for a volunteer. They say they'd rather live on the street. That I asked that question. I don't know if you guys have ever listened to my chat. That's why I'm speaking out. Because when I chat, I don't see the comments after the first five, 10 minutes. Well, we, we, we haven't had a chance to, we haven't had a chance to answer all the uh, about that Questions contradiction a among the boys having to shelter when people in homeless don't want to be sheltered. And I'm honest, I'm lying. My kids are sex love. I don't uh, lie. Well, I know we have a lot of people that don't want to be sheltered because the shelters are so bad. It's, it's pretty simple, right. it's pretty yeah, right. easy to understand. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if people Can want I, to uh, have any Danny? other concluding remarks yeah. or I would like to say that. something. Oh, okay, uh, go ahead. Because we lost our councilwoman because she was sick and y'all don't know her, uh, but she is, you know, a fearless warrior. And she would have uh, certainly represented, and there were several of us from Oakland, but um, we should see these discussions as a continuation, the kind of uh, the wisdom and instruction that each of you brought is exactly why the league has established these dialogues and the way that uh, General Dogon broke it down cell by cell, the way we need to organize our political education, that's what we all need to be about that business. 
And a part of what the league is about is how do we help complement, support, and you know our, our various efforts in doing that. So one, I wanted to thank all the panelists. Y'all were dynamite, did an excellent job. Uh, we got a big, big job ahead of us um, and we are ready for this. But think about, let's keep thinking about the ways that we can work strategically together. The way Brother Dogon laid out, they're doing their you know, block by block uh, uh, planning uh, for doing political education. Not just canvassing on getting this or that person elected, but what we need as a people to live. And I think that those are incredible, powerful messages, but we also have to build. Um, and I, I really thank you all, you're just great. Could I ask a question? I go talk with communists. I wonder, are there sweeps that general when after you guys do the political education? I know there's been sweeps when 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 we've gone here in San Francisco, the coalition and homeless to do outreach. And and that's how I was afraid of, of doing outreach to the homeless. I was afraid they would be swept. Thank you, Yolanda. I don't know if anybody has anything to say uh, about that, but we're- I, th I, I think, Yolanda, were you asking if um, there were concerns about like a sweep coming in after political education? Is that- Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. I understand that being a concern. Um, may maybe if people heard about your political act act activities, like did that target anybody, General? Yes, well, oh, okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, I, I want to thank everybody for participating. I want to uh, uh, thank uh, Sister Ethel for summarizing the discussion. And I, we are sorry that, uh, that uh, Carol Fife was not able to stay for the final, uh, uh, for the last round of questions. Uh, but, and we want to take this time to, one, if you're interested in uh, the League of Revolutionaries. We do have a website. It's uh, lerna.org, L-R-N-A dot O-R-G. And uh, we also have a paper, it's called Rally. And if you go to the lerna.org website, you can uh, get linked up with our newspaper. I wanna thank you all for attending and participating. I wanna thank you, especially all the panelists, as, as Ethel already mentioned, from both from California and from Kansas. And I want to thank all the people from all across the country that participated. And uh, we're also, I also want to thank our tech team who did a good job of uh, managing uh, all the technical issues and made it go uh, at least relatively uh, uh, smoothly. Uh, you put up with some of my uh, mistakes as a moderator and uh, you made everything uh, look, look, look great. 